church. How are y'all? <laughs> so before we get started with uh, the message I have for you with One Accord today, I wanted to go ahead and share with you the verse that's going to underline the entire message. And that verse today comes out of Acts 5.41, and it says this, So they, the disciples, departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. What does it mean to be counted worthy to suffer? So that brings us into the country I'd like to discuss with you today, and that is Nigeria. Now, Nigeria is one of the areas of the Christian church that is most viciously persecuted. One such example happened not too long ago where a Christian college student um, was praising God in a group text for her high exam scores, and this resulted in her stoning and then her classmates setting her body on fire. Yes. This is a common occurrence in an area, and you can see on the map that's getting ready to come up, that though Nigeria is one whole country, it is severed right down the middle with a predominantly Islamic north and a Christian south. That border is constantly being pushed in the very center as Fulani extremists continue to attack the Christian south, displacing thousands. You know, what's so interesting about Nigeria is though there is such vicious persecution, there is also great fruitfulness. Nigeria is considered the world's strongest prayer movement. Also, Nigerian missionaries lead the way in African-based missions mobilization. So when you think about Acts 5.41 and you see the words rejoicing and suffering in the same sentence, it's hard to imagine what that looks like. But I believe Nigerians truly know what that means to look like, what that looks like. You know, it's not because of socioeconomic difficulties or broken governments that these things happen. It's because we, our brethren, all of us around the world are considered and counted worthy to suffer. And that's important to remember that through the suffering it is not anything else but a blessing so that others can come to know Jesus Christ through our steadfastness in him. So let us pray. Lord, I just thank you for all the blessings that you give us, Lord, even the blessing of persecution. Lord, I pray that through the persecution of those around the world, including those in Nigeria, that others may come to know you, Lord. We see persecution starting at the very, very beginning in Acts. And it was through that that so many others, including Saul, who became Paul, came to know you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all that you give us. Thank you that you give us hope and steadfastness. You are truly our firm foundation, Lord. I pray for those in Nigeria to continue to be bound firmly to you and the hope that you give us, Lord. Encourage them. Bless them. Help them to proclaim the truth of your word boldly, Lord. I do pray for those who persecute them, Lord, that they would also become strong, strong witnesses of you too, Lord. So we love you, Lord. We thank you that for all that you provide. Thank you for the cross and salvation, Lord. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.